Welcome everybody to our session about modules in Fleet 12 and Fleet 15. We will talk today about similarities and differences of modules in these two code streams. My name is Stefan Behlert. I'm a product manager for the SUSE Linux Enterprise product family. We will first have a look at the two code bases, Fleet 12 and Fleet 15 and then looking what those means for the modules of the various code bases and the characteristics there. At the end, then, we have a look at the module details as well as an overview of the module content. But let's look first at the code bases and the structure of those products there. In the past 2009, we had code 11 where you downloaded a simple ISO images that contained a product. For example, the SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. One product, one ISO image. With Sleet 12, we enhanced that and had, besides the ISO images, also modules available that provided additional content for the various products. Nevertheless, the ISO image had a lot of the additional content, but also the essential content for the various products. In SLE 15, we divided that up and split that big ISO image, that one product, into a lot of modules. What that means, we will get into that in a few minutes. But let's first look at the question why do modules at all? Well, have a look at the customer expectation. As a customer, you have different requirements, you have different needs. On one side, you may be in an area where you want only slow changes, where you are depending on stable interfaces, where you are worried about the bugs that exist. You want as few as possible, you don't want to get new bugs being introduced when a fix comes. But you may also be somebody who wants to have a more current version, who needs the latest and greatest, or at least the latest and greatest stable version of an application. And independent if you need one or the other, you may have a need for innovation, for new features that you want to see inside of the products. But all without regressions, all um, with as few bugs as possible and with new features and innovative new versions, the risk of bugs is higher, of course. You also may have a need or you want to have a lot of different applications where you can choose from. So you find the best application for your needs and your requirements. On the other side, the download size should be small. The download times should be small. And what you spend on resources should also not exceed the minimum. And of course, there's always the topic of hardware enablement and other stuff that comes. All of that bringing up a mixture where different requirements and wishes compete with each other and even contradict in some times and cases each other. At SUSE, we have one principle and that is stability. We do not want to break existing ABIs or APIs. Yes, APIs and ABIs may get added through a service pack, for example, when a kernel update comes or when a new version is introduced or a lib library is added. But feature enablement as well as bug fixes are done very specific and whenever feasible done through backports so that we can guarantee that stability. But that provides also a support dilemma because on one side, everybody wants a long time of support for the stuff that he has. And we support our applications and products 
for 13 years and in some cases even longer. But upstream doesn't support versions so long in most cases. We support things even longer than upstream does and that can be very problematic. And what to do, especially if you have a software that leads a faster life. Think about something where you have major version updates every two years, every year, or in worst case, every six months. That results in a lot of versions that you need to support and where you have to do back, back ports, which is not always easy. And at the same time, as a customer, you want to keep the overview. You want to see what changes. You also may have internal requirements, guidelines, and restrictions that treat every package that you download in a strict way, like review internally for specific stuff, bug fixes, quality assurances internally that you have on top of what we provide legal reviews and other things so you want to have that amount of work definitely limited to a small number of issues and packages so how can we solve this that you want the latest and greatest or a big variety of packages and a lot of bug fixes but have only what you need and not what you don't need so that you can have a reduced download size. We looked at the packages and we defined groupings of these packages. So we put packages together based on use scenarios, based on life cycle, um, based on if these are must-haves or just additional functionality providing packages. A must-have, for example, for the server would be server applications, while a desktop environment on a server is more in the nice-to-have, but not in the essential and mandatory area. But with grouping, we can distinguish that and allow you to reduce the download size. So you just download what you really need and what you need, and not everything, which also as a consequence, reduces your internal review efforts and the time spent for downloading and reviewing. But what is a module then when it's, if it's a group of packages? Well, in the end, it's exactly that, a collection of software packages that are delivered as a repository. These collections have a common denominator, a logical functional cohesion, or are grouped with another um, aspect, for example, the life cycling. They come as an addition to the base product. So you download still the enterprise server, but you have the modules on top of that, providing additional functionality, especially in CLE 12. Nevertheless, they are considered as a part of the distribution. So you have L3 support. A module is definitely not a pattern. A module can contain patterns. So if you install a module, you get patterns. You can still select inside of the module what you want to install and not to install. But in itself, it's more than a pattern. It's a repository in the collection of packages. Modules are not always independent and self-standing. You definitely need a base product for each of the modules, but it may also be that you need another module to have all the packages inside of a module runnable and running. And not every module is available for all of the products. But what are now the characteristics when we look at code 12 versus code 15? Let's take one step back to code 12. You remember we had that monolithic product design. We had the one ISO where you downloaded, for example, as you see it here, the SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. There's a lot of stuff 
on that ISO. The essential parts, also some additional packages. But it's not everything. There are things besides that. For example, the containers or the public cloud module are available already there because they are on a much faster track. You need updates there much faster. And not everybody needs the public cloud module. Public cloud module uh, contains things if you create images for the public cloud. We will go into that a little bit later. Besides that, you have extensions, live patching, the high availability extension, the real-time extension that you could download, extra ISO images. And there is the SDK, which is available uh, for all of these SUSE Linux enterprise product families, one ISO there for all of these products. The SDK media contains the devil packages, it contains development tools, everything you need if you want to develop your own applications. But it, oh, sorry, it also means that if you want to develop on a SLE product, you have to download the SDK with all its content where you maybe not needed everything. So with SLE 15, we changed the paradigm there a little bit. Instead of saying we have products and modules, we say everything is a module. And the product is formed by modules, by a set of modules. And the modules also identify which product you have. They provide essential functionality as well as additional ones. There's a set of common code base modules that are available and used by all of the products. For example, the base system, which contains the kernel, as well as registration tools and update tools and other stuff, the desktop application tool, and a few others. Then there are modules that are providing the essential functionality for a product. So the Linux Enterprise Server, for example, has the server application module, which provides all the tools a server may need. And the extension, you may ask. Let's have a look at the high availability extension. It still exists and it contains of one module, the high availability module. So you can easily combine that together with other products and use it. And besides all of that, there's a pool of modules that you can add and use that have additional functionality like the container module, the public cloud module, or Python module. So for both 12 and 15, a few things are true. Not all modules are available for all products. It doesn't make sense to have everything available everywhere. On the other side, every module can be added with the same command, the SUSE connect. To treat it like you did with an extension previously, you add the module and once it is added, all content inside can be handled with the regular tools that you're familiar with and that you are accustomed to use. No need for any specific tool, just use what you're familiar with. Both. SLE 12 and SLE 15 have a difference in the module's life cycle and the module content life cycle. Those are two different things. While a module may exist for the whole lifetime of a code base, the module content can run on a different life cycle. For example, a package may get replaced after an amount of years with a newer version. Think about scripting languages or other things. Yeah. Of course, there are overlaps and there's information available how long things are supported. Have a look at the output of Super Lifecycle, which provides information for each package that you have. On top of that, if you wonder where is a package, there's also the Super Search packages, which you can use to find packages. But there are also differences between code 12 and 15. On code 12, the modules were service pack independent. The only exception was the certification module, which was always 
valid for two service packs and then update it with a new version. On 12, the modules only had additional content. So when you had installed the ISO image and downloaded it, you had everything essential that you needed. And the modules were just the cherry on the cake. There were no product identifying modules. So you will see in SLEE 15, when you upgrade, there are modules that have the name product inside, which have the content and provide information what product you are using. So for example, this, the release packages are inside these product identity modules. And one thing that was a little bit painful and is, is the modules are only online available. This is due to the fact that the same module repository is used for all of the service pack and the modules grew over time. On SLEE 15, on the other side, um, the modules also have, as we mentioned, essential content for the products. You get every essential module uh, by default selected when you install a product and you can use it. The good thing is you have no duplicate downloads. Think about as less and as less for SAP installation that you do. You had to download with Sleet 12 an ISO image for SLES and one for SLES for SAP, both containing the same kernel and a few other things, which is duplicating stuff and downloading it that is not necessary. On SLE 15, you download once and you have the same module, the same base system module for SLES and SLES for SAP. In addition to that, the modules can be downloaded together with the base products in an offline image. So if you want everything in an ISO image, you have the various products and modules on one ISO image, for example, for air -capped installations or to browse through the modules and see things easier. Let's have a short look at the types of modules and repositories. The differences here between SLE 12 and 15 are not so big, so we start with, fifth, with 12. You see here two groups of modules. One are the SUSE deliverables, and then there are modules that are not delivered by SUSE and SUSE products, but come from third parties. Example for third party modules, is of course the NVIDIA module or the package hub, which is community driven and community provided and supported, where you have literally thousands of packages on top of the SUSE products. The package hub packages are checked and quality tested by us also. So you get their packages without L3 support, but with the same quality standards when it comes to check-in that you are accustomed to from the SUSE products. If you're interested in more of that, have a look at the SUSE roadmap sessions for 15 SP3 and uh, for LEAP. If you look now at the SUSE product deliverables, there's one thing that we don't have in 12, that's the SUSE Linux Enterprise Base. There is no module providing that because you have the ISO that you download, the monolithic base system, you remember? You have the extensions where you may need a separate subscription like high availability, like live patching. You have the uh, developer supporting modules, the tool chain module, which is mostly containing a GCC on 12. And you have packages that help you to migrate from older code streams. The legacy uh, module comes to mind here. In addition to that, you have modules that are rather stable, slow moving. The weapon scripting, for example, is one of these. And you have modules that are rather agile, moving fast on a fast track. The containers, the public cloud module. Those follow the community and upstream as appropriate and needed in a much faster pace than the stable ones. 
and you have modules that are not L3 supported, like the SDK, we talked about that, and the workstation extension, which has some productivity suites inside. SLE 15 is not so much different from SLE 12 in that regard. But you have now the enterprise base modules that provide the base system, the server applications, the desktop applications module, which are essential for each of the respective products. And we have dropped one thing, that's the SDK. The SDK in its form was not appropriate in our minds for the new structure of modules. So we split it that up. We put part of the SDK into the developers module, which is now a combination of the tool chain module and the SDK, and put other things into the various modules. So you have the modules together, the binary packages for an application, as well as the deep devil packages that you need if you want to create your own applications. That offers you in a close approximately the packages you need. The developers module has then gotten all the various development tools that you may need if you want to develop with the addition that these are now L3 supported packages. Let's have a closer look at modules and what we have there. We mentioned already the product identification modules. Um, those have product slash product slash inside of the name. Um, you, in most cases, will not see them. They get installed on SLE 15 automatically when you install your product. There you find release related packages like release notes package, uh, release package updates and other things. Essential and you need it on all of the products is the base system. It has base libraries inside the kernels, everything that you need to have a functional system, including the update stack and other stuff. So this is one of the modules that you always need and that you always should install. The base system itself as module doesn't exist on SLE 12. It's included in the product as delivered. On SLE 15, as we mentioned, the products are split up into various modules. And there you have then the base system. The server applications is needed if you have server workloads. It's a base um, or an essential module when you run a server product. The desktop applications has a basic desktop environment, a basic desktop manager that you can use, or if you, for example, want to install a server without any desktop applications running, you don't need to enable that. You don't need to download it. You just use a base system with the server applications module. If you run SAP workloads, you definitely want to run and use the SAP applications module. It contains special tools that you need in that environment that allows you to handle the tools and the environment in the best way possible. The high availability extension and module contains clustering technologies and other stuff that you may need and want. It's included in this list for SAP product and available as an extension for SLES and SLES for HPC. HPC or high performance environments on the other side will want to use the high performance module where you have all the tools needed there as well as special compiled libraries fit for HPC environments. If you install a SUSE Linux Enterprise Desktop, you have included in it the workstation extension, which is also available uh, for the server, where you find productivity tools like LibreOffice, GIMP, and other stuff 
that you meet if you go more into the productivity area on the desktop side. The development tools, we already mentioned that. Um, you see here, it's not available on SLE 12. On SLE 12, that was the tool chain. We have to go into one specific detail here of the two code streams. We have one compiler that we use as system compiler. So everything we do and we provide is compiled with that compiler, especially the kernel. And that compiler is the same one throughout the life cycle of a code base. But when it comes to the application layer, you may need a newer compiler version with specific newer um, optimizations and performance improvements. For that, we provide a newer, the latest GCC compiler in the tool chain on SLE 12 and in the development tools in SLE 15. The runtime is available uh, in general and updated according to the latest GCC. Now, on top of that, the development tools has development stuff and applications that you need if you want to develop your own software. Web server workloads to get enhanced, just apply the web and scripting module, which has several things inside that you need on web server. Now, public cloud is a topic for a lot of you. And if you don't want to use images that already exist and are provided or ready to use images, but create your own images and enable them for the various uh, CSPs, then the public cloud module is the way to go. It contains everything you need to enable the images for the various public clouds. Basic container handling is done through the containers module. If you want very elaborated, enhanced container handling with a lot of management, I recommend to you the various range of products that we have and have a look at those. But the basic handling can be done here through the container module. Something we introduced new in SLE 15 with SP1 was the option to do atomic updates. Atomic updates are still done with the family tools and system tools that you have. They just allow you to do a transactional update of what you have. So all is applied or nothing. And it's not directly used, but you do a reboot after the updates to enhance the safety and security here. If you want to do that, the transactional server enabled when you install will provide and set up everything for that. If you have the requirement to only run FIPS 142 certified packages, the certifications module has those packages. The module there is a little bit special because the packages inside are frozen packages. They just contain the certified versions and will not receive updates there. So you just have here the certified stuff. And if you want to run only on certified packages, this is the way to go. A little bit special is the Python 2 module because it contains Python 2 packages and that module might get dropped in the near future because Python 2 is end of life since quite a while. Uh, we still support it so that you can migrate from Python, Python 2 to Python 3. But keep in mind that's a longer time that you'd need to spend on doing so. So you might still have a need for Python 2 for a while. Use that module, but pretty please migrate your applications as soon as possible to Python 3. Packages and applications get replaced with others from time to time, especially when it comes to a new code stream. Either because the new application offers more service, has better functionalities, more performance, or because the old available 
uh, packages have so many security issues or legal concerns that we decided to discontinue them on the term. Nevertheless, some of those require quite some work to get migrated from the configuration side. Think about if you want to go from an NTP setup to a crony setup, you may want to spend more time than you have while migrating the operating system. For that, the legacy module offers still as we supported those discontinued packages so you can uh, migrate with those packages and their configuration. And then do in a second step when you have the time, migrate from the old discontinued applications to the new ones that we provide. The last two modules that I want to mention, the advanced systems management as well as the tool chain, uh, those are discontinued in 3.15. We said already the tool chain being merged inside the development tools and the advanced systems management was also split up and put into several of the existing uh, modules. For example, SALT can be found now in the base system. What modules do you need? That's very simple. Um, on SLE 12, all the modules existing are on top. You have no requirement for them. You don't need them. It's additional content. On SLE 15, you definitely need the base system module. And um, there's a default selection of modules per product that is normally a good choice. If you do a migration, enable the legacy module and the Python 2 module. That's wise. It makes things easier in some cases. Otherwise, what you need depends on your use case. So to recap, um, the modules help you to keep an overview of what you download. Uh, you see very clearly what you get. You have a wide variety of options to choose from still. And the various life cycles of the modules also allow you to select what you want and to set your expectations right. So if you only want uh, slower moving things, you don't activate the modules with the faster moving stuff. Module details, we, you can download this presentation um, separately and look at that. We will not go into the various details as this would really take way too much time than we have. But you see, there's a lot of modules available and I encourage you to use it and to have a look. And if you miss something, let us know and we will see that we get this for you. With that, thank you very much for your attention. I wish you all the best. Mm -hmm.